the final week of fantasy hockey has arrived and you're still tapped into your daily source for fantasy hockey and betting breakdowns. It's the Monday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. The Jets sending a major message to the Avalanche. We'll talk about it and what it means on today's show. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Woo, baby. The NHL playoffs are almost here. Fantasy season is winding down and we're ratcheting it up a notch. On today's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, I'm joined, as always, by... And on this side of the microphone... Big Flip Livingstone. Shout out to all the everydayers holding us down, making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On NHL for a hundred bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Steel, we're on road dealing with Wi-Fi, hoping the connection is still fire, and hope the rest of today's episode is fire. Because look, I said it last week. I'm going to continue to say it. The NHL is on fire. The buzz is around the hockey world. Austin Matthews has a big reason to do with it. We'll update that very quickly. He's at 69. Mick Jesus, he's out again. Three games he's out for the Edmonton Oilers when the best player in the game gets hurt. We talk about it. And speaking of which, Mark Stone rising from the ashes once again to perhaps carry this Golden Knights team on another deep run steal and Maybe the meat and potatoes of today's episode, and you and I will break down every single playoff series at the end of this week, round by round. However, the Jets send a very big message to the Avalanche over the weekend, 7 nothing slap up. I want to talk to you about it, and I want to talk about Monday's bets because we're still getting this paper. We got eight games on Monday night slate and a bunch of very important ones in that Eastern Conference race. I'm going to stop talking, Steele. Over to you, my friend. Muskoka legend out here holding it down. <laughs> What are you seeing? Obviously, Poppy, 69, it's special. But the Leafs blow that one. Got to be concerned about how they're looking right now overall. Yeah, I mean, that's that's two, three times in the last seven games that they've, they've let it go to overtime and they've lost in overtime and they've lost a big game where they should have won those two points. I think, like, you, you look at the standings right now, it's pretty much solidified that they're not going to be getting home ice advantage at this point. Uh, and that was key for like, you know, they they would be fighting for that position if they had gotten those two points over the New Jersey Devils. And, mm-hmm. and you know, again, big night for, for Austin Matthews, 69 goals. I mean, absolutely incredible the pace of goals he's been on the entire season. I think mm-hmm. he has, what, eight or nine goals in his last – he's on a six or seven game goal streak right now. So it's incredible in that yeah. feat, but I'm, I'm sort of – Eight games. I'm sort of with uh, – I'm sort of with Sheldon Keefe right here. You know, like the 70 goals is a little bit of a distraction right now. And Definitely. you can see it, you can see it in in the play with a lot of his teammates. I really like mm-hmm. the, the play of Max Domi on that top line with him. I think that's a lot of I think that's a lot a, a big boost for the, you know, going into the postseason for a lot of Maple Leaf fans out there that it's not just gonna be Mitch Marner or Nylander, but you've got Domi firing for two yep. firing alongside Austin Matthews. But you can see it in the play in last night's game or, you know, a couple of days ago in that game from the Maple Leafs is Mitch Marner. And, and again, Max Domi at times and Tyler Bertuzzi, they're all trying to force a play to Austin mm, Matthews. Exactly. And he did score. He did score a beautiful goal. Don't get me wrong. It was absolutely it's what he does. Uh, yeah, It was incredible, but they're forcing a lot of these plays. And a lot of that is coming from Mitch Marner. And, you know, I know he's only been back for a few games now since injury, but I mean, mm. he hasn't looked great to me. I know he's gotten a lot of uh, assists, where he's on a mm. he's got a you know a four game assist streak right now or something like that, but he hasn't looked at his best to me personally just because he's he's forcing a lot of plays right now. Yeah, and I think actually when you look at the month of April for the Toronto Maple Leafs, big six four win over the Florida Panthers. Then they come back, they get crushed by the Tampa Bay Lightning four one. Then they went reel off three pretty impressive wins: Pittsburgh, Montreal, yeah. Devils, and then they blow it to the Devils six five. They basically play like trash for most of that game against the Red Wings. Poppy mm-hmm. saves their bacon a little bit. However, the postseason's coming. He's got two more games. He's at 69. They got Florida on Tuesday and Tampa on Wednesday. I can't help but feel he's going to get there. But is Connor McDavid going to get to 100 assists? We know the answer is no if he's not touching the ice deal. He misses his third straight game. 
The Edmonton Oilers, obviously, look, they lose 3-1 to the Vancouver Canucks on Saturday. He doesn't play in that one. Hit me with your take very quickly. There's not a whole lot to be said here because I think he's going to be back. However, we just saw what not being in the lineup is doing to Mitch Marner's game. And if you're not in there at this time of year, Steele, I don't really care who you are. Being thrown right into the postseason wolves, if you haven't been on the ice, is going to affect his ability to perform. That's just a fact. I, I think if anyone can come back from injury there after missing a couple Thank of games, it's Connor that. McDavid. So I'm not too concerned with him. I don't think okay. it's, uh, you know, if he misses the first game of the postseason, then I'll be concerned because then Fair. it's legitimate. See, this injury. is why we do it together. Reel me in. I, I, I'm not too concerned. Out of any player in the NHL, Connor McDavid is a guy I'm not worried about, you know, coming mm. off of an injury. And, you know, we saw him at the beginning of the season. So, I mean, he he's, yep. he he showed us that he can turn it on you know, just like that. So I'm not mm -hmm. too concerned. I, I will say this. If if he does miss the last remaining regular season games for the Edmonton Oilers and mm. we don't see McDavid hit 100 assists and we don't see, even see Matthews hit 70 goals, that's a that's a gut punch to all hockey fans out there who have been <laughs> who have been waiting and waiting and praying for both these players to reach both of those historic feats. So I hope he gets in at least one of the games. I know Edmonton doesn't have a very hard schedule moving forward. So yeah. I hope he gets in the last game of the season and he gets to 100 assists. Me too. The numbers, we've talked about that. We don't need to go there. It's been well documented. Everybody's yeah. talking about Poppy 70. Not a lot of people are talking though. Nikita Kucherov is also knocking on the door of 100 assists. Nobody's talking about that. And all we've heard is Lemieux or... Gretzky, only guys to put up 100 assists. Nobody is mentioning that we could have two more guys added to that list. It's really just been McJesus. Needed to show Kucherov some love, even though he was held pointless on Saturday. That pooch to parlay of mine. Don't want to talk about it. He is still <laughs> having one of the best seasons we've seen in a very long time. Now, Mark Stone, 16 goals, 37 assists, and 56 games this season. But we know what this guy does the best deal. He's a grit grinding beauty. And in 22 playoff games last year, he had 24 points and was a big reason why that Vegas Golden Knights team went on a run. He is now practicing in a non-contact jersey. Very funny timing for that, eh, Steel? All of a sudden, Mark Stone rises from the ashes once again. I'm not going to get into any of the LTIR madness. However, 9.5 million of LTIR space allowed them to bring in Noah Hannafin, Hurdle, and Manta. What are you looking at for this Vegas Golden Knights team before we get to break in the Jets and the Avs and bets? What do you think about Mark Stone's potential return? Nothing in stone yet, no pun intended, but it's looking like he's going to be a piece of this run once again for Vegas. Yeah, you know, I'm a huge fan of Mark Stone. And, you know, when we talk about <laughs> him fantasy-wise, I think he's proven that, you know, he's a, he's a very good fantasy player. And, you know, you talk about the injuries that he's dealt with over the last five years, even six years, honestly. Yeah. And, and that, that has dropped his fantasy value because sure. of, you know, the endurability that he had showed all of us fantasy GMs out there. I will say this about him coming back and he, you know, he's in a non-contact jersey, he's practicing with the team. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a little bit of a joke that this is the third consecutive year where he's been injured in the month of February. He gets put on LTIR and then yeah. he comes back like, with three games or three or two or three games remaining mm -hmm. in the regular season, then he's ready to go. You know, it's, it, it's, you know, <laughs> it all started really with Nikita Kucherov that one season and yeah. now Vegas is really just, yep. they're really taking advantage and milking, <laughs> milking that, uh, that loophole that seems to be going on mm. uh, with these top teams right now. So I, I'm not a fan of Mark Stone coming back from injury right now. Uh, obviously I want him to be healthy. I want him to play in the postseason, but just mm. the occurrence, the timing of, it happening three seasons in a row now is very sus, very fishy, very, very fishy, very sketchy to me. Yeah. I will say this. I saw something online the other day about this and it was saying, it, you know, it was kind of going along with the uh, LTI or our, uh, you know, what's going on with Vegas right now with mm -hmm. Mark Stone and, you know, all this debate. Yeah. It, I, I saw something online where it was saying like they need to play the last game of the regular season in order to play the first game of round one of the playoffs. I like that. So if he comes back for, and you know, again, like he's practicing in a non-contact Jersey, <laughs> yeah. throw him in and throw him in that they have. That's what I saw online is they throw him into action. He has to play the last game of the regular season. If he's mm -hmm. not ready to go on the last game of the regular season, he and can't he play the first game of the postseason. Yeah. Hey, look, 
at the end of the day, this is just, again, a master class of running an NHL franchise by the Vegas yeah. Golden Knights front office staff. However, I like that. I was like, I don't think I want to talk about the LTIR situation. You just dive right into it. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I mean, it's, it's This Vegas ridiculous. Golden Knights team has been given a very good hand to get off the ground in a hurry. Yeah. A Stanley Cup and a Stanley Cup trip in their first six or seven franchise uh, seasons as a franchise, obviously – they got a very good hand dealt to them. Let me talk about Mark Stone very quickly right after the break. Along with the Jets and Avs and Monday's bets, we got eight games on tap. We got our locks of the night coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts that fit your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, baby. And with all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and take home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay, guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Big news this week from Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On's NFL Mock Draft is live on Ooh. April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, uh, streaming on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL mock draft on April 17th, 7 Eastern Time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Day's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Make sure you hit the subscribe, the follow button, leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. Flip, back over to you. Mark Stone, his yes. return to non-contact practice action right now. What, what are your thoughts on Mark Stone and, and the Vegas Golden Knights moving forward? Two things immediately. We know that we kind of are in love with the blue line in Vegas. When I oh, take yeah. a look at the yeah. forward group and we talk about their power play, lack of quality over the last couple of weeks, you know, they sit outside the top half of the NHL and power play, you know, me and special teams, ba ba ba. Mark Stone is an effective power play piece that if he comes back is going to be important for them on special teams, number one. And number two, I alluded to why I think this is going to be huge for them is he is just a very tough player to play against. He's regularly in the top few for Selkie voting as the best defensive forward in the NHL. He can get it done on the power play, and he is a B in your bonnet. He is the kind of player that goes up against the other team's best line with regularity, and that's where it can be become a huge thing here for Vegas and the matchups is if yeah. he rolls into that top six. Now they have the ability to much better match up against the other team's top six, and I think that's where this could be absolutely massive for a Golden Knights team who also, if we're going to poke holes in it, their maybe secondary scoring is one of their biggest weaknesses. Yeah, and I think that's definitely something, you know, that we haven't seen enough of this season from that bottom six group in Vegas. I do sure. want to bring this up because I know you are very high on these Dallas Stars making a deep yes. run in the playoffs. Yes, I am. It, it, it's pretty much, again, solidified that it, like, it looks like the Dallas Stars are playing the Vegas Golden Knights in the first mm -hmm. round. There still is a chance. I mean, Nashville has to lose their last game. They play the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we'll get to that on big time bets. Yes, sir. Um, but the the if the Nashville Predators even just get one point, they yeah. they they're a lock for that first wild card spot, mm -hmm. which means the Dallas Stars will be playing the Vegas Golden Knights. It looks like. Wow, what a series! So, do you still feel do you still feel the same way with that first round matchup with the Dallas Stars going up against the Vegas Golden Knights? Like what do you, I know we're gonna do all our, mm. our playoff yeah. predictions, you know, you know, highlight yep. all the top players and whatnot, but just early, early prediction of what you're feeling for Dallas Stars versus Vegas Golden Knights, which looks like will be the first round matchup. 
first of all, we're going to do X factors. We're going to do keys yeah. to the series. We're going to do who wins and how many games. But very quickly, I have to answer your question, and I will do so. I am still giving the edge to the Dallas Stars, but this is going to be a battle, and you and I love predicting how many games. I'm going to save that for the end of the week. And I'll say this. One month ago, if you were to ask me that question, that was the first-round matchup, like even, even five weeks ago. I would have said, I'm unsure. I might actually lean to Vegas because of Jake Ottinger. But Jake Ottinger has turned it on in a big way, and he is the key and the difference maker. We know Dallas up front balanced. We like the blue line. Like I had questions with the special teams and the secondary scoring for the Vegas Golden Knights. It's Jake Ottinger because at times this season, he looked lost. And we've seen him do that in the postseason as well. If he can do his thing and he has all the ability to steal, I'm going to say stars take that series, but I'll wait for my full prediction Friday, Thursday, whatever, both. That's going to be a fun conversation because early prediction, I'm going with the Vegas Golden Knights. I oh. think it's going to be a great first round matchup Blood between bath. the stars and the Golden Knights. But I mean, when this team's fully healthy, you can't, you can't deny the reigning Stanley cup champs right now. And yep. Hey, with Mark Stone coming back in the lineup, it looks like they're almost going to be fully healthy going yeah. into the postseason. Must so nice. they've got Aiden Hill back there. It looks like Mark Stone's going to be back very, very soon. Uh, they've gotten a lot of injuries back into their lineup. So, hey, Jack Eichel as well. We'll get Must we'll break nice. all of that down before we get over to big time bets. You want to talk about the avalanche mm. getting absolutely dusted, yes. left in the dust by the Left's Winnipeg Jets. Seven nothing victory mm. from the Winnipeg Jets to uh, mm -hmm. pretty much, you know, again, the last one, you know, last or second last game of the season, and they're going up against them in the in the playoffs soon. Mm. I mean, what what a way to send a message before you, you go up against them in you know less than a week. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> also, also just throwing out a completely balanced scoring attack. Seven yeah. goals, goals coming from all over the ice. I'll throw this out there very firstly for you. Steal a little food for thought. Three regular season contests between these two teams this year. Colorado lost the first one 4-2. They lost the second one 6-2. And they just lost this last one 7 nothing. Oh, no. Those are all very convincing Ws. Is that the regular season? Most definitely. Do you turn a page <laughs> in the postseason and maybe put all of those stats out the window? For the most part, yes. But I got to throw that out there and I'll leave it at this. Is a team like the Colorado Avalanche good enough to outscore its weaknesses? And is Gorgiev good enough to take down Connor Hellebuck? Those are two very big questions that I'm excited to hear your take on. I think they short are answer, good enough. Short answers, because we got to save all of this for yeah. the preview show. We'll save it for the preview. Short answer, they are good enough to outscore. Okay. They aren't good enough where Gorgiev's going to outbattle Connor Hellebuck. So, okay. I mean, it's a 50-50 on those two questions right there. Okay. Yeah, we'll break all of it down. But, I mean, just a, I mean, just a few episodes ago, I said there was – maybe slim to none, maybe a 5% chance the Winnipeg Jets win a series <laughs> against the Colorado yeah. Avalanche. Now, now you're listing all these numbers in 0-3-0 on the season for the Colorado Avalanche where they were outscored what, like 16-17 uh, to 6, to something like that? I mean, Yeah, like 14 or 15 to 4. They only scored 4 yeah, goals so in 3 games against Winnipeg. That is not a great sign, but I mean, this is the Colorado Avalanche. We're talking about Kale McCarr, Devin Taves, Miko Ranton, and Valeria Nachushkin, Nathan McKinnon, all mm. these guys, Arturi Lekin, and all these guys, they bring in a couple from the trade deadline. That's the big question mark for me. It's not mm. about the offense. It's not about the defense. It's about Gorgiev. We oh, have yeah. seen him struggle all season long. And again, he's played the most games, maybe top three most games played for goalies right now this league, along with UC Soros. And uh, I think Connor Hellebuck is up there as well. Mm. That's a concern for me going into the postseason. That's the big question mark. It's not so slim to none anymore. I'll, I'll leave it at that. We'll break it all down in a few mm. episodes from now, but it's yeah. not slim to none. This is going to be a very, very fun matchup as well all the matchups in the western conference are going to be i mean the entire playoffs are going to be sick and also i would have said maybe because these last game or two here are also going to determine who gets home ice advantage in this in yeah. this uh head to head but they just put Very up true. seven goals on the road in colorado and shut them out 
Not a good I don't one. even Not a know good if it really matters as much right now because it's going to come down to what you already mentioned, and it's going to come down to, look, the Colorado Avalanche are number one in the NHL in goals per game at 3.68. They yeah. also have the fifth best power play at almost 25% efficiency rate. If those two things can continue to go, they have to go at that level, like you said. That's the only way that I think they're going to have to run and gun their way past this Winnipeg team. Winnipeg has a bunch of big boys in that bottom six, and their blue line is also pretty beastly. I just need the puck to drop on all of this stuff, Steel, because I am ready and raring to go, just like I'm ready to get to bets. But I'm going to give the edge to the Jets, but just very oh. slightly. And we'll talk about it, though, because oh, yeah. on paper, Colorado is so loaded. Kale McCarr has almost 90 points, and no one's talking about it. That's a career high. That's just how good he's been over the last couple of years. Oh, ho hum. 90 points from a guy who's in the fourth year in his career is just seriously impressive. Anyway, take us away, my friend. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for this eight-game betting board on tonight's action. Just a little side note. This is a little bit off topic, but we're talking okay. about points and the standings and people not being discussed. We haven't really discussed, or I mean, he's been kind of ghostly. We haven't talked about him, or not a lot of people have talked about him. Artemi Panarin, fourth. Yeah in the National Ooh. Hockey League with 118 points. We have we barely talked about it cuz Save that for tomorrow. Yeah, cuz we're looking at Kucherov, we're looking at we're looking at Connor McDavid, yeah. we're looking at Matthews and we're looking at McKinnon. Mm -hmm. So it's it, he's kind of been buried there, but I got to throw Artemi Panarin's name because he's been that. absolutely stellar and he, we we haven't really talked about him too much, but we're going to talk about him maybe a bit later, maybe on tomorrow's episode. Next coming up after the break is big time bets, but first this episode is also brought to you by Sleeper. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. We are down to the final five games, last three games, two games of the regular season, and teams are still battling for position in all four divisions, regardless of where your team is in the current standings. I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. It's not just hockey. You can also play NFL, NBA, MLB, CFB on the Sleeper app and entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is pick whether studs like McDavid, Crosby, McKinnon, Hellebuck, all of these players, if they will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100-time bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me locked on, Fantasy Hockey fans. You can win a 100 times your money playing daily Fantasy Hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your pick so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe button, the follow button, leave a five-star review. Yep. We'll break down all of the postseason playoff, uh, every all of the postseason uh, matchups that you need to know about going into the, into the playoffs. We'll break mm -hmm. everything down, uh, X factors, bets, top players, worst players, you know, players to keep an eye out for, everything you need to know. Let's mm -hmm. get over to big-time bets, though, for That's Monday Big betting board on the schedule. We are in the last week of the regular season. The last day, I believe, is April 18th. Thursday. Yeah. Playoffs start Saturday. Yeah, two days right after the you know, regular season. 420, baby. We'll get him blazed up in here. <laughs> and the postseason of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. It's blaze season, baby. You know what it is. Hello. Big time bets, though, where the money is made. Flip, over to you, my friend. Where you looking? Where you starting? Yeah, I'm going with three home favorites in this one, Steele. I'm going with three home favorites that have a lot on the line in terms of, well, in two teams, they still need to punch their postseason ticket. So okay. number one, Nashville into Pittsburgh. Sidney Crosby has literally resurrected this team from the dead. They are 8-0-3 in their last 13 or 12 games. They are getting it done. I wanted to go Sidney Crosby anytime assist because that's just been hitting for me as well. But go with the Penguins. Also, when you take a look at this head-to-head, -head, no disrespect to Nashville, who you know you and I are going to talk a lot about as a pesky first-round team. However, the Pittsburgh Penguins have points in eight of their last 10 games against Nashville, including six dubs. They're a good home team. And when things go up a notch, we've seen it. 
Sidney Crosby is one of those guys that literally thrives and feeds on it in the Olympics, at the World Championships, in the regular season, in the All-Star game. It doesn't matter. Now it's on the line. Sid tastes the postseason, and that's trouble for whoever's going up against Pittsburgh right now. Huge shout out to one of my favorite players to ever do it. He's resurrected this team. <laughs> Pens, money line, minus 150. You know I got to get in some Sid love before the season ends, Steel. Well, I'm there with you. Penguins on the money line, minus 128 right now is my first Whoa. pick of the night as well. Nice. Uh, I'm taking the home Penguins as well. So you said it yourself. Sidney Crosby has resurrected this Penguins team over the last, you know, 10 to yep. 15 games. And they've been yep. on an absolute roll uh, mm -hmm. with, with Sullivan behind the bench as well. So, I mean penguins on the money line it's the last game for the national predators on the season we talked about it yeah. um if they get at least one point they finish in that first wild card spot but i'm still taking the penguins on the money line and what's interesting too steel lastly just to, not to cut you off there this nashville team over the last 10 games lose to colorado and boston then they beat jersey and st louis they lose to the islanders and jets then they beat the columbus blue jackets and blackhawks They've been losing to good teams and beating the really bad ones. So that's just a little bit of a factor here that you've got to consider down the stretch. Yeah, but they were also on that 16-game winning streak where they were beating a yes, lot of, they were. of top teams as well. No U2 so. for you. <laughs> no U2 for them after yeah. that uh, dusting from the Dallas Stars. Yeah. My second pick of the night, I'm taking the Rangers Senators over mm. six and a half at Ooh. plus 100. Okay. The last three games have gone well over six and a half. Uh, they've been actually close to nine uh nine and a half actually so ranger senators over six and a half at plus 100 great Spicy. odds you're gonna get great odds um last game of the season for the new york rangers as well as they try to uh, uh solidify that spot in the top of the metropolitan division my last pick and you know alongside what you were saying about teams still needing to punch their way into the postseason oh, I'm, I'm going with the going. team the islanders on the money line minus 102 against the new jersey devils I yeah, I totally agree with everything you said there, Steele. You cut out a little bit, but I'm still feeling it. Last two picks for me. I'm just going to fire these off very quickly. The Minnesota Wild uh, into the LA Kings. The Kings have really taken them apart in their last two meetings. 7-3 and 6-0 in their last two games earlier this season. So I'm just going to go with the Kings at home on the money line to take out the Wild. Minus 170. You're paying a lot of juice with all three. Slap them together in a parlay and thank me later. Lock of the night. The Detroit Red Wings put up a very good performance for most of that game Saturday against a motivated Toronto club. Did the wheels almost fall off completely? Yes, they did. But they still got the win. They have points in eight of their last 10 games against Montreal, including six dubs. They need this win in a very, very big way. Montreal's cooked. You heard me say it. They also have just gotten slapped around by the Islanders and the Ottawa Senators yeah. in their last two games. Detroit on the money line. Minus 190, again, a lot of juice here, but I'm just going to go with the Red Wings on the money line at home because that feels like the wave. That's the lock of the night. Eastern Conference teams, there's still four or five teams battling with two games remaining for yep. two playoff spots. It's absolutely incredible. Those are the locks. Yeah. Those are the picks for Monday night. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, go check out Locked On Sports today, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. You can also find it on the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. They're here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.